Thanks for joining us. My name is Greg Kale, and I'm joined by Stephen Estes Smargiasi, who chairs the Lead and Copper Rule Technical Action Work Group for the American Water Works Association. Steve joins us from the Boston area, where in his day job, he's Director of Planning and Sustainability for the Massachusetts Water Resources Authority. But today, Steve's gonna help us understand the December 16th announcement from the White House and EPA regarding regulation of lead in drinking water. Welcome, Steve. Thanks, Greg, glad to be here. There was a lot to unpack uh, in the administration's press event last week in Washington, D.C. Uh, maybe you could just give us an idea of what the essence of, of that announcement was. Sure. There were three key elements to the, the announcements that were made last week. First, EPA announced that the revisions to the lead and copper rule that were issued back in January of this year are going forward. They're now in effect and with the completion uh, compliance date rather of October of 2024. Second, EPA announced that they're planning additional changes to the LCR. These will probably be issued in draft form later this year, early next year rather, and EPA expects to finalize them before October of 2024. With this notice, they're essentially signaling some of the areas they think need to change. Finally, the White House issued its lead pipes and paint action plan. This 15 point plan provides actions and funding from multiple parts of the government to deal more holistically with lead paint and lead pipes. This whole of government approach is something that AWWA has been advocating for putting lead in context with all those other sources of lead in homes and communities. The White House also announced a variety of funding sources for lead service line replacements, testing and remediation in schools and childcare facilities, and lead paint removal. While it's not enough to fully fund or solve any of these problems, it's a good down payment and a chance to get started. Yeah, so uh, following the announcement, if you're speaking directly to water utilities uh, today, what should they be doing? So the most important takeaway I got from the, the changes is that the rule from January 21 is now final. Uh, they, utilities need to take steps now to ensure that they'll be in compliance by October of 2024. Probably the most significant thing they could get started on is their lead service line inventory and developing plans to fully replace all their lead service lines while meeting all those other conditions um, that are put in the new rule. My perspective on the inventory is, Greg, our customers expect us to know if they have a lead service line and for that information to be readily available. That's just good customer service. Remember, the new inventories require that folks know about what's in the private side and the public side, what's on private property and what's in the street. And the revised rule includes galvanized pipes that are downstream of lead pipes. Those need to be part of the inventory. Systems need to be thinking about how they'll also handle those pipes that they don't know what they're made out of. Those unknown status need to be part of the inventory and require an annual notice to customers. Right, so, so to be clear, does, does the new rule only impact uh, utilities that have a lot of lead service lines in their community or say, you know, high sampling results? No, it affects all utilities. You don't need to have a lot of lead service lines or high lead results to be affected. EPA's notice isn't definitive on the topic, but it certainly sounds like they're gonna be taking a more aggressive stance on accelerated lead service line replacement. Perhaps even if systems aren't above the action level or trigger level. So we think every system needs to be proactively communicating with their customers about the risks of lead in water. Um, AWWA has some great communications things on their website, and the Public Affairs Council is working on some additional materials. Yeah, so, so do you have some sense of what else is likely to change? Well, EPA has given us some hints. They've indicated that they heard comments about the administrative burden of the revised rule and the confusion of having both a trigger level at 10 and an action level at 15 parts per billion. How they're going to respond to that? We'll have to be wait and see. We also think that there could be some changes in the sampling protocol for sites with lead service lines. So uh, let's rewind back in February of 2020. Uh, you were testifying 
on AWWA's behalf before a congressional subcommittee on the lead and copper rule. Mm -hmm. I know at the time, AWW was stressing about the importance of getting all lead service lines out of the ground over time, and at the same time, really strengthening protections today. Um, when you look at the rule as it stands, how do you feel that it addresses those issues? Well, it does. AWWA, as you said, have strongly stressed the importance of getting lead out of contact with our water. The revisions clearly focus on that. And they also maintain a focus on our other priority, which is corrosion control as a critical part of managing lead. Service line inventories that are required should inspire action by both our customers and by the systems themselves. And the focus on prioritizing underserved communities and providing additional funds for action in those communities should mean that the public health protections are equitably provided across all communities. So, uh as they're doing this announcement, the, the, the White House also announced its lead pipes and paint action plan. Doesn't trip off um, so the top, in your right? experience, yeah, it, it's a mouthful. Um, is it, uh, in your experience, more important for this sort of coordinated federal approach to address all the different sources of lead exposure? Yeah, if we care about public health, we can't lose sight of the fact that lead comes from all of these different sources and all these different places. We need action on all of them. The fact this point's been raised repeatedly by AWWA in our work groups with them, in our official comments, makes no sense to remove the lead paint from a house and leave the lead service line. We need to get all the lead out. Yeah, thanks, Stephen. I, you know, I hope you'll uh, join us in the future as we continue to unpack this rule and then also look at any potential rules in the future. And I wanna remind uh, all the viewers out there that AWWA does have a lot of resources to help uh, utilities and to help people understand about lead risk. You can find them at awwa.org slash lead. Uh, thanks, Stephen. Yeah, great. With all the new resources coming from feds, this is a great time to get started. My parting advice, don't wait. Get moving with your inventories and start working on your lead service line replacement plans. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you and excellent advice.